the town board meeting. The meeting all. Welcome to the town board meeting, February 14, 2022. Please rise and salute the flag. Congratulations to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Councilman Fazio? Here. Councilman Lewandowski? Here. Councilman Niles? Here. Supervisor Molino? Here. All right, we will now open the floor to the public uh, for any questions on the Resolutions that we're about to uh, pass or deny. Got uh, Mary Ellen Allison. All right, Mary Ellen. Hi, Mary Ellen Allison, Hall Hill, Lake Luzerne. Um, I just wanted to first say thank you to Mr. O'Neill for responding to my um, concerns about the meeting tonight in his email. Thank you. And the other thing that I um, had a question about was when our town board meetings and other town meetings will be open to public attendance. Uh, that's gonna be up for discussion later on tonight. So you'll have to stand by. Thank you. Is that it, Mayor? Yep. Okay, that's all we have for hands raised. Anyone else out there, just please just yell out your name so we know. Or oh, raise your hand. Or oh, raise your hand, I'm sorry. No. All right. Oh, somebody just popped up, hold on. Go ahead, Jack. Yes, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, yeah, I have a question. Is the, uh, the resolution on this evening for the garbage approval? Approval. Is is something going to be vote a resolution being voted on with regards to trash hauling or anything like that? All right, there's, there's a resolution in the packet. Um, I can give you the number. It's uh, I'm requesting that we do our garbage trucks to go back to the Hudson Falls burn plant. It's on the fourth page. It's um fifth page. The reason why I'd like to do this, we've been having our regular garbage trucks to go to the landfill that, we're, that we did all last year. Uh, we have a lot of trouble with it. We've uh, lost some tires. We've got wires that are in the landfill wrapped around our brakes and it's costed us a few dollars. And, uh, we've been using the trash plant for 15 years. Last year, we didn't use the trash plant. Um, the attorney uh, suggested we didn't use it only because he wasn't licensed in uh, New Hampshire where their main old corporate office was and he felt that there was any discrepancies or any kind of problem with going to court, he wouldn't be able to defend us. Um, we had none in the first 15 years, uh, but uh, I have a letter also come, came from our uh, buildings and grounds department, the, the gentleman that drive the trucks and they just feel that the damage is, is not worth um, the extra money that we're going to have to spend at the current plant. So this uh, this place you're selecting now is priced higher than the place you've been using? Uh, I apologize. I didn't understand that again. Did I totally is it priced higher? The trash plant you want to use, is it priced higher than what we have been using for the last year? Uh, this, this is not tired. This is just garbage. He said, is it priced higher? He didn't say Yes, anything. it is priced higher. I'm sorry, I apologize. That's right. It's $20 a ton more to go there and, and do it. And, and how, many, how many tons a year do we bring there? Probably about um, 15, um, I mean, 150 tons. Not even that much, I'm sorry. It's like, it's under, it's under 100 tons, like nine, nine something. Okay, and was this put out to bid? No, it's the only trash plant in the area. We didn't have to put it out to bid. It's a, it's a contract that, that we, I'd like to change to go into there, that's all. Didn't the county yeah, put it out to bid? Yeah, the county has, it's under the county uh, uh, bid. The county has the bid. We didn't have to bid it because it's the only trash plant in the area. 
and we, we used it for 15 years with no problems. And I just like to move it over there because it's not worth the uh, the damage that happens to our trucks in that landfill where we go, Green Island. But if if it's uh, an increase in pay, an increase in expense to the uh, town, um, and from our procurement policy, doesn't it require going out to bid and selecting the best bid? We're using the county bid. There's no bid from us. It's using the Moraga County umbrella bid. So we don't have to bid it. They bid. Did, I, I'm sorry, I didn't understand. You said that the town is not required to bid on this and, and even though it involves spending more? No, we're using the county bid. The county has the bid on it. But we didn't use it last year because the attorney felt that if there was a problem or a litigation, he wouldn't be able to defend us. We, have, we used it for 15 years before that. I'm asking that we continue the garbage gets picked up at our trash plant, go to Green Island because they bring it with their own trucks. Our garbage trucks are getting damaged going there. We're losing tires. Um, we had, it's not worth the, the investment of moving our trucks to go there. Is, is there any, is there any uh, documentation with regards to damage to our trucks? Yep, I have a letter from our our buildings and grounds department and explaining all what uh, we read them at the, um, I don't know if we read them off yet at the uh, last meeting, but they, they prefer to go to the uh, burn plant for number one, safety, and number two, wear and tear on our vehicles. Okay, thank you. Well, got uh, Gina Mincer. Minster? I don't know if I'm saying it right. I'm sorry. Gina Minster? Yep. Go ahead, Gina. Good evening. I, I'm, um, I received a letter that there was a fellow landowner making a presentation to the town board members regarding an Adirondack Park Agency map correction application, but I didn't see it on the agenda. No, oh, it, was, it was canceled. It was, it was taken off the agenda two weeks ago. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Mariella, hold on. Oh, did you have something, Mariella? No, I guess not. She lowered her hand. That's all we got. All right, we'll move on reading agendas because oh, we have. Oh, she just floor. popped up again. Hold on, Gina. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Mariella, and unmute yourself, please. Hi, you sorry about that. Um, I just wanted to clarify for um, Miss Mincer that called in. That item was not taken off the agenda two weeks ago. I just received information about that uh, Thursday evening, last Thursday evening. I just wanted people to know that it was on, it was scheduled and it was just taken off. Thank you. Anybody else? All right, let's move forward. Laura, you want to start with the answer to the uh, resolutions? Resolution comparing <coughs> the bills of the second abstract of 2022 are as follows. General fund vouchers 28335 to 28413 for 45,731. Highway fund 28274 to 28334 and 24 to 24 to 4 to 3 11,730.40 and SW2 water 284 to 4 to 284 to 550. Any motion? I make that motion. I'll second. second it. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Carry none. Carry. Resolution to accept minutes of December 6th, 13th, 20th, January 1 and 10. Make a motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Hearing none, 4-0 carry. 
Resolution to reappoint John Kerensky to the Board of Assessment Review, whereas there exists a vacant seat on the Board of Assessment Review, and whereas John Kerensky, Kerensky has previously served on the Board of Assessment Review, having served the duration of his term ending in the year 2021, and whereas John Kerensky has expressed a desire to continue ser to serve on the Board of Assessment Review, now therefore be resolved that John Kerensky is reappointed to the Board of Assessment Review for a five-year term. I'll make that motion cheerfully. John does a great job from my perspective, so I'm happy to, to do that. I'll second it. Same thoughts. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <clears throat> Carrying none. Carried four zero. Resolution appointing Burgess of it to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Whereas there exists a vacancy on the Zoning Board of Appeals, and whereas Burgess of it has previously served on the Zoning Board of Appeals as an alternate, and whereas Burgess of it has expressed a desire to continue to serve on the Zoning Board of Appeals, now therefore it be right, resolved that Burgess of it is appointed to the Zoning Board of Appeals for a five year term. I'll make that motion. He's doing a great job for us. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, carried four zero. Resolution renewing maintenance agreement with tie sales for meter reading equipment. <coughs> Whereas the town has an existing annual agreement, maintenance agreement for its meter reading equipment with tie sales. And whereas the town board has determined that it is in the best interest of the town of the town, continue the annual maintenance agreement with tie sales pursuant to quote number QTE 0053217. Now therefore, be, now, therefore, be it resolved that Supervisor Molino is hereby authorized to take the necessary actions to continue the annual maintenance agreement with tie sales pursuant to terms set forth in the quote number QTE 0053217. I'll make it. I'll second. Four zero. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, Perry. Resolution to accept maintenance proposal of Kingsley power systems, whereas the generator located at the town hall requires routine maintenance, and whereas the town board has determined that it is in the best interest of the town to engage <coughs> Kingsley power systems to perform the maintenance pursuant to quote number 211208-0032. Now, therefore, be it resolved that Supervisor Molino is hereby authorized to take the necessary actions to accept the maintenance quote provided by Kingsley Power Systems pursuant to the terms set forth in quote number 211208-0032. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Hearing none, carry. Resolution to accept the annual audit of record keeping, whereas pursuant to the town law section 62 and 123, the town board performed an annual audit of books and records of town officers and employees on January 13, 2022, and whereas the town board examined the civil and criminal dockets of each town justice and determined that the fines and fees shown therein have been collected and turned over to the proper officials. Now, therefore, be it resolved the audit of record keeping conducted by the town board on January 13th, 2022 is accepted and is further resolved that this resolution be forwarded to the Office of Court Administration. I'll make that motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carrying none, carry four zero. Resolution authorizing technical services change order for Chazen Engineering. Whereas the town board through resolution 174 of 2021 accepted the proposal of Chazen Engineering to perform an engineering assessment report. And whereas Chazen has determined that in order to complete its engineering assessment report, <coughs> a survey of the dam and surrounding areas must be completed. And whereas Chazen prepared a technical services change order, a TSCO, to modify the agreement dated November 9, 2021 to include the reference survey was as defined in the TSCO dated January 12, 2022, amounting to $9,900. Now, therefore, be it resolved that Supervisor Merlino is hereby authorized to take the necessary action to authorize the work contained in the January 12 TSCO pursuant to terms set forth therein. I'll make a motion. 
Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Hearing none, carried. Resolution naming a private road. Res resolved pursuant to town law section 64-9, the town board hereby names the private road on the Warren County tax map ID parcel number 318.1-26 as storage building drive extension. Motion. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Hearing none carried. Allowing the PTSA uh, cardboard boat race. Resolved upon demonstrating proof of insurance in a form acceptable to the town, PTSA is authorized to conduct its second annual cardboard boat race at Wayside Beach on June 12, 2022 at 1230 p.m. I make that motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? <coughs> Hearing none, carried four zero. Accepting agreement with Warren County for Invasive Species Funds. Resolved, Supervisor Merlino is hereby authorized to take the necessary action to accept the agreement with Warren County for $41,666.66 to be used pursuant to the terms set forth in the agreement. Make a motion. Second. Uh, on a question, I just... Mm -hmm. I did um, request of one of the board members in the in the contract. It says um, if you don't use the money, it has to go back to the county. Um, that's in the all the contracts. <clears throat> excuse me. That mostly the county gives your money. I did go to um, the finance committee of the county. I checked with the uh, treasurer and I checked with the uh, at the finance committee, and I brought up the. The problem was that it got suspended last year because the contractor canceled the contract because of lack of employees and COVID. Um, and they passed a resolution um, last uh, the 4th of February, um, accepting my request to have forward back over to that this year's money. And um, it'll go in front of the full board next Friday. Uh, it got approved seven seven zero at the finance committee. Now it'll go to the full board. I'm pretty sure it'll go back. So we get to keep that, or is that it, it, that'll no. count towards this forty one six sixty six? Get to keep that. Okay. What about all the other years, Gene? Well, we've never had leftover money. No. Always, always, because we have to put in a, a little bit more money other than the forty two. Mm -hmm. so. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Hearing none, carry 4 0. Accept, accepting proposal for disposal at Hudson Falls plant resolved. Supervisor Molino is hereby authorized to take the necessary actions to accept the proposal from Robert McNamara, dated January 19th, 2022, for waste disposal at the Hudson Falls plant at the annual rate of. 2022 at $73 per ton, 2023 at $77 per ton, and 2024 at $81 per ton. I'll make that motion. I'll second it and open discussion, please. Mm -hmm. So we're getting into a three-year contract with these guys now, June, as opposed to the one that we have been doing. What's What do you think the advantage is to doing that? Well, it just keeps the price down a little bit. It's guaranteed for three years. We did it all three years uh, on the other ones. And I just said, uh, I've got this in front of me. We, we spent on this, the uh, Western Star, we had to buy tires. They're, they're $493 each on those trucks. Um, the International um, tire was $404. And we had to put brakes on the Western Star because. Uh, How many tires did we buy? Two. Two. So that's $1,000. So. 50 tons, basically. But it, and I, I, you know, I'm just asking because it heats up the trucks, especially this time of year. They come back muddy. Come back, you know, it's it's wear and tear on the trucks. Mm -hmm. And we we used them for, uh, like I said, 15 years. Never had a problem. Um, never had a litigation. And we're continuing the other part of the contract. 
for the haulers like waste management that take it out of our landfill and they truck it from their own trucks and we pay the tonnage. So if you weren't aware of the mic, I talked to the boys down there. We were kind of fortunate when the wire wrapped around the drive shaft, it also took the brake lines out. <laughs> yep. Okay. I just don't see it offsetting twenty dollars a ton times a hundred thousand tons. I, I really don't. That's that's a lot of money. Gene said ninety to a hundred thousand tons. Ninety two tons. Tons, yeah. Ninety two tons. Right. All year long. Most of the year, yeah. That's I have ninety two tons for the whole year. That can't be. It changes because of. So about a ton a week, a little bit more. Uh, Rick's uh, letter. Yeah, you had to read Rick's letter. I read it. Yeah, I read it. I'm it just asking, not... doing my due diligence. That's all. Yeah. No, no. It's, I, I already looked at this. That's the only reason I'm speaking up. He doesn't say what the labor cost is. He just mentions that if he had labor to. And the one truck, it took two guys to get, get there, fix it on the road, or tow it back in. So, Again, I got just a few questions. Go what about the New Hampshire thing? I mean, that was a, a legitimate issue that Attorney Mitchell brought up last year. If there is litigation, we can't defend it. Mike, you can speak to that probably better than I can, but they're licensed in New Hampshire or something where being doing us doing business with them in New York, it left us no way to to potentially litigate if there was a problem. Do you have a problem with that? Uh, not necessarily. Um, I'm not licensed in New Hampshire, and so I would not be um, entering into a, a courthouse in the state of New Hampshire. We get um, waived in if necessary. <coughs> um, then again, uh, I think that there would be some um, um, potentials for if there's again a hypothetical litigation, it could be susceptible to uh, New York State. Um, so there, there's uh, potential that litigation, if there was going to be some regarding the contract, would be in a New York State venue. But um, certainly, if if something was brought in a New Hampshire proceeding, um, you know, we'd either have to get um, waived into New Hampshire courts or um, engage a, a, an attorney who's uh, licensed in New Hampshire. Gotcha. And then my last concern, Gene or whoever is, if we remember last year, we there was a list that came out that listed them as the top, one of the top 10 most polluting and environmentally unfriendly companies in the country. That was no joke. That was right online. It's still there. I looked at it. Have they done anything to, to fix that issue? I, I can't answer that question. They, they get regulated by the state. And they're still running. So mm -hmm. um, I honestly can't answer that. Okay. So they've been still running, and like I say, I'm only bringing it up. I know it costs a little bit more money, but it's it's a safety factor number one, and plus we're in care of our trucks. Do we have to do the three years? Uh, yeah. I can't believe we only do 92 tons a year, though, Gene. I'm not saying you're wrong, but that doesn't make sense to me. We're running two garbage trucks every week right now, and they're they're packing them full. It's got to be more than. A ton a week. I'll, you can table it right now, and I'll get. No, to I'm it. just, I'm not, I'm just asking. I want to make sure our numbers were right because we were talking a hundred thousand tons a few minutes ago. Well, it can't be. You just said ninety-two. A hundred thousand tons times twenty dollars is two million dollars a year. So that can't be right, right? No. No. A hundred so, tons times twenty-two dollars. Seventy dollars. It's twenty dollars different. You're right. going by the yeah, whole yeah. thing. That's two thousand dollars. Yeah, it's not. Yeah. It's not a million dollars. Right. So that's what I'm just questioning. Right. It doesn't seem that we'd only be collecting 2,000 pounds a week right now. When I see every single house, it, it just doesn't add up, does it? You want a table with Mike? No problem with yeah. it. And I'll get you the numbers. What's a, what's a typical dump truck carry? 18 tons? 18 tires? 18 tons, right? 18 yeah. tons. So you're telling me we don't fill up a, we fill up a, a, a less than a tenth of a dump truck every week with garbage? It, it just doesn't work. It doesn't work for me. I don't believe those numbers at all. I'm not saying you're deliberately misleading, Gene. I'm not saying that in a second, but I would like to see the real numbers before I commit to that. Plus, I don't like the fact that they're not in the top 10 environmentally unfriendly place here. We are trying to do the right thing for the lake and everything else and to contribute to everything bad in the world by saving 20 bucks or for 20 more dollars and, and have to lock into it for three years when we can do a one year somewhere else. To me, that I, I'm, I'm not in favor of it, but 
we'll see everybody right. votes. Let's That's table all. it. Okay. Has anybody contacted our existing uh, receiver? I'm going to call and say, "Hey, fix your road." That's 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 all handled by the county. They got the contract. It's not the road. It's going into there because they, they it's actually going up on the scale in that area, right? In the plant, not going to the plant. Reading Rick's letter, it sounds like he wants a crushed stone in the right place, Mike. Solve a lot of problems. Yeah. No, the, the whole thing is that when you go to that, that landfill, that's like our old landfill here. We we'll used to dump and we put dirt on top of it. That's mm -hmm. Of course. And this, when that stuff gets washed away, uh, you, you run, you, you're running over garbage. Sure. But you bring up valid points. I won't argue it on. But uh, it's to me, it's not worth. Uh, we had to spend two two men down there that day to get that. I'm point. wondering if there's anything in that contract that you urge to. Uh, Back charging for uh, actually uh, negligence on their part in regards to tire debris left over, not picking up their site. Or that. Michael, could that be possibly done? It's possible. We have to look and see if we have a, a standing contract with them. Um, I don't know if it would necessarily fall into uh, negligence, all depending on. What the specific situations were, but um, you know, I can certainly take a look at what we, you know, the current contract is. I'm sure, there's some hold harmless verbiage in there where it's going to tell, say that we're, you know, they're not responsible for anything, but you know, but it's, it's good possible. to know. I mean, if, if they are um, not providing a uh, uh, you know, safe environment or um, you know, ingress and egress. Um, you know, it's, it's at least worth a discussion. Is there any harm in tabling it to Linux me that anybody can think of? It's just they would have to continue for one more month right. to go to the other plant. Yeah, the potential harm would be the problems we're having. That is correct. I think we ought to pull some figures together and put this in more of an alignment. For everybody to have all the facts and figures on it. Okay. And also find out if, due to negligence and things like that, the establishment, establishment's uh, place mm -hmm. in regards to not taking care of and cleaning up their mess, uh, yeah. that we've got the right to uh, back charge them in regards to the repairs and things of this sort. I'd be one of all the sons of time on that. I think this is the county favored place over here for whatever reason, because they were behind it and you got everybody in a world of crap from what they did with the plant. So of course they want to steer everybody over here. That's my take on it, but I'm not going to just sit here and, and blanketly approve things that number one for the three years where it's going to go up $8 a ton by the last year of the contract and everything else that, that we mentioned. So I, I'd like to see more information if everybody else is okay with it. Okay, we can take it. I'll move to table it. Second. All right, go ahead, McPherson. All in favor to table? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Hearing none? Table. Uh, resolution authorizing agreement with Grint Bottle Return. Resolved Supervisor Merlino is hereby authorized to take the necessary actions to enter into the attached agreement with Grint Bottle Return for the year 2022. I gave you that. A little while ago. Make a motion. Open for, yeah, open for discussion. Are they going to pay by check and all that stuff that we had talked about, Laura, at the last meeting? Okay. Yes. Perfect. Thank you. And they're saying within um, a few days of when the drop offs are not that we would have to wait a month. They're not like some places make you wait 30 days. And he said it could be as quick as a few days. Awesome. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Hearing none, carry it for zero. Resolution establishing and confirming committee assignments. Laura, I'm going to stop you from reading through all those and just make a motion to table that as obviously we're, we're down one person. So. Okay. Was that, was that Jim? Um, All in cut. favor? Aye. Aye. Sorry. There's three more that were missed on this um, 
either one that was discussed uh, in our workshop. They didn't get on this one here. One was cedarwood. We discussed cedarwood. I'd like to stay with cedarwood. If, if you read the contract, there's no money involved. If we call them and we need them for something, then they have the formula of what they charge for. So I know you would like to go over to uh, Chazen. Chazen does do water, you know, which is fine, but they do the same thing, do it and get charged. So we have an option when we actually have a problem. I just don't want to get rid of them because if towards the end of April, early May, um, they did that uh, water grant for 2.2 million. And I just would not like to say we don't want to use them anymore right now. And so if we don't get the grant, it doesn't cost us anything. And if we do get the grant, they're there, they're there to do all the engineering and follow all that that they've already done. So I know you, you want to keep one or the other, but if, if you read the contract, it doesn't cost, we don't have a bond, we don't have any upfront money or any of that stuff. It's when we call them and say, we need it like we did with Ron and they did the water lines up in uh, for for Pierpont. They came in, engineered it for Ron, and they followed it and we paid. So that's just my reason not to, you know, not have it for the rest of this year. So are you saying if we get the two million dollar grant that we're obligated to spend it with them or would we put that out to bid to get the best price to spend that we money? We definitely put the out to bid. They're only the engineers. Right. No matter who is the engineer, <laughs> how, will, how do they get paid? They, they get paid for the engineering costs, and they'll probably get paid to keep an eye on whoever is doing the work. But wouldn't that part of it go out to bid as well, or no? The general contractor or whatever aspect of it? Well, that's why you got the contract of what they'll charge per hour for work that they do. Mm -hmm. So we don't need to go out to bid. We've already got the numbers. What did, what would Chase in charge for something like that to do I, this? I didn't ask for prices. So why do we need why do we need to lock anybody in? Well, we're not locking anybody. We can do anybody right. Oh, I understand. Easy. You know, Make it I easy. Know, but uh, it, we're not like them. That comes in. We get it, and we decide we don't want them to handle it. That's our choice, and then we can put it out for bid. Mm -hmm. But they already got money. There's, there's things in there. What they'll charge for doing that type of work. So the only advantage or reason to sign this, whatever it's called with them, would be to have a rate locked in if we want to use them for something. That's all it is. There's no is that, bond. Is that there. accurate? Yeah. So if we do this, we're not making any commitment to them. Nope. We Other than that. pay them that them. amount if we try to choose to use right. it. When it comes in, if we get that money, then we can put it out to anybody to do it for us. They'll, they'll, they'll have the numbers already what they're going to bid on. We can get two other engineering companies for each to bid on. Might get a little cheaper. I don't know. Yeah. Right now, that's what their money is costing us if they do the job. Does anybody have any feel for how booked up engineering companies are right now? I, I don't have a feel for it. Everything is starting to break loose. Uh, no, I, I don't have a feel. I mean, I, if they're, um, uh, I think it might depend just firm to firm, but uh, I don't know. Right, yeah. It'll, it'll, all, it'll all fall down to like, the time that the bid comes in. You get that um, grant, that's when you put it out and you can put it out to anybody. What was Jason's rate in the, in the $9,000 thing? I don't remember. Do you remember? I don't. What was that, Jim? What was Chazen's hourly rate? I don't think they had one. They yeah. had a total breakdown. They just gave you a flat. I'm just, just a lump sum. Yeah. Okay. I don't think I have it. Hold on. No. Uh, is there a Russian on the board for that? No. No. Did anybody make a motion? I didn't. No. The last thing I knew, we were on uh, list of committees, and that was cable. So we didn't vote on it or anything for cable. So what are you proposing, Mr. Supervisor? Well, we went there. When we we're, we're on, it's a uh, seat, just yeah. to leave it like it is. 
not to. to we have to renew one, right? This is for the rest of this year. Okay. I'm just, I'm just worried. You know, when we, if we get that grant, they work hard on getting it. They pay for it. Oh, well, I understand that. But what, what do we do next? We have but someone worked out of the discussion. What right. We well, the discussion might want to go with um, Jason. And if we want to go with Jason, then I don't see how you two on standby. I don't know what Jason would charge. But uh, they would have to do all the check of all the engineering plans and everything to see what they would charge to do all that. It costs us a little more okay. there. Are you looking for authorization to sign Cedarwood's agreement? Just to be on our standby, like we've done okay. you know, for years and years. Maybe it's not right, but this is the way I feel they deserve to have a chance to. Why do you feel it wouldn't be right? It might not be right or whatever. What would be Well, right? that's the way it makes it sound like, you know, I'm. I'm Making, I'm asking to have them here. It doesn't sound like it's right. There's no real reason. I don't care who does it. But right now, they did all the engineering work. They got paid for it. And I just feel if we get the money, they should have first rights to bid on it. I have a little different. First, I, I don't understand. I'm not being argumentative. Gee, I don't understand first rights to bid on it. When you take bids, it comes, everybody has a right to bid on it. Right. right. So, what's first rights to bid on it mean? Well, if we leave if we leave them out now, you want to you want to disengage our contract with them. That's what they have the contract. If we disengage it, maybe they won't bid on it, or maybe they will. I don't know. But it's safer to keep somebody that we can call up and ask questions to that laid out the engineering problems uh, thing than have to bring somebody else in that doesn't know anything about all the engineering work and have to look at all the schematics. <laughs> I'll guarantee you, if somebody can go out to bid, they are going to look at everything regardless. They have to. If they want to bid on it, they have to look at it. They can't charge us to look at it because that's part of the bid process. So that kind of doesn't own, make sense. We own that paper. That's correct. Right. I, I kind of have two thoughts related to that. From my experience, the company that designed it will know the most about it, which Typically, all your contractor. Typically, that would mean they would have the best price on bid day. Right? They should have. Well, I don't think that we need to. I, I kind of disagree with you a little bit. I, I don't. I don't. I, I wouldn't worry about keeping them on because they wrote the, the grant proposal. All right. But what I do like is having somebody available for a set amount for other quote emergencies. We don't have to go to if we don't want to. Well, it's basically what I'm so, saying. What, what's that? Saying? I'm saying that's that, what I'm saying. I'm, yes. I'm saying I'm in favor of signing that thing as long as it's clear that we're not there's no up obligating up anything to them. There's no upfront cost at the present it, time. Not. Right. right now, we have no work for That's my two cents. And like I said, what, what about six months ago, they came in, did some engineering, and gave us a bill and paid it. I'm just not wrapping my mind around why we want to sign with somebody if it's still open for everybody to to bid on. I, I, I don't. I just don't. I, I'm not understanding it. But I, well, I, I think it's simple. They, they did the engineering job for us, and they've spent all the paperwork. Yes, they got paid for it, but they know all the ins and outs about it right now. Right. Somebody new that's going to come in is going to have to learn the ins and outs of what what they did or re re engineer it. Or just look at the schematics. Well, just look at it. Yeah, that's anybody that's going to bid on it is going to do that anyways. They can't bid without right. doing their due diligence. You want to table it, Mike? I'm just I really don't care, Mike. Yeah. I don't care. I, uh, it sounds like it. No, I, I, I'm just trying to move forward for this town. It's not always looking at the negative end. Look at the positive end. We have an engineer. Gee, company. dollars and cents so isn't negative. Call, I can call any minute tomorrow and say, come up and engineer X amount of project for me tomorrow for something that he might want to do or we might want to do. Okay. That's what they're stand. They're on standby for that. Okay. That's all. You want okay. to go have hire another engineering company? You have to hire Chase. And that, to me, I just don't think that's worth the expense of having them on board. But we don't know what they charge. Yeah. yeah. We don't know. How can you, that's what you? I get what you're saying. I know you want them. They did a great job, but. That's not responsible. You could say it's negative, but it's actually what I'm trying to do is be responsible. Uh, obviously, you don't approve of that, but that's okay. 
It's, it's not that it, I don't approve it, Mike. You just don't understand. This company here is on standby. I understand. Don't push dime. But I have we have them here if next week or two weeks from now. We need them. Okay. And to, to go out and get another company to be on standby, I don't know if there's a charge. I really don't. I, don't, I know, but shouldn't we know that? Mike, you do whatever you want. Oh, I'm, I'm asking I'm questions. I'm not going to sit here and debate it. Okay. Oh, I, see I that. think it's the best interest for this town, Perfect. not in bad interest. Okay. And they had, they were with us for a lot of years, and they did real good work. Good. And there were also maybe six or seven other towns in this county. Mm -hmm. So they must be doing something. I'm sure they are. So let's move along. Do we have a motion? Do we get a motion to do it? I'll make the motion. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. All right. Opposed? Yeah or no. So, Paul, were you yes or no? I'm sorry? Yes. Okay, so 3 0 carry. 3 1, three, one. <laughs> carry. All right, the next one is the Adirondack Local Government Review Board. We discussed it, it was on um, our agenda for agenda meeting. But it didn't make this uh, on here. It's three hundred dollars. Um, again, we use it most of the time. I know about it, and they help us out when we have uh, problems that we want to have the government, a government entity, fighting the government for us. So it's it's a it's a it's a, um, it's a dues. That's what we're paying to be part of this organization. We want to do it. We need a motion. I'll make that motion. Thank you. Are, are we allowed to vote on this because it wasn't posted? Or no? I know we have that thing. Can we do it? That would have to be 24 hours posted before we can move along. We have it. We have it on the agenda. Was it on there? Okay. The agenda, but it just never made it to this time. Right. I'll say that it's stamped. Okay. I'm just making sure we don't want to. Yeah. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And the last four zero. Are you going to read all those, not those letters and stuff that people say? They're all in your packets. I do have a letter. I do need to read though. Okay. You don't refer to some of them. Yeah. Okay. Well, we had one request from uh, Mr. Harry. Yes, it's in your packet. Yeah. It's an email. And one request from Mr. Harry is trying to help me out, make sure I'm making the right amount of money, which I appreciate it. He says I'm losing money, but. We have the numbers right here, and as far as that thousand dollars went, um, my base salary is thirty-five thousand dollars and three cents. I pay health insurance for nine hundred and seventy-six oh four. I pay dental for six hundred twenty-eight sixty-eight, and provision one hundred sixty-one seventy-two. That comes out to a bottom line of three thirty-three thousand two thirty-three fifty-nine. That's what the W two form will show. And if Mr. Herring uh, still wants her, he can come in and we can just show him mathematically how to set that award. I don't know if Mr. Herring's on and he wants to ask any questions, I'm here to answer. All right. Go ahead, no, he, he is. Go ahead, Jack. Yes, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I was referring to uh, his salary in 2021. Um, contractually, he was supposed to make 32,000, not 35,000. Is that correct? Um, I, don't, I don't think that's correct. Well, it's resolution number six of the agenda meeting of 2021. They voted to approve your salary, annual salary of 32,000. What's that? And you got $4,000 or whatever it was for 2021 of budget office. That was budget office. That's included. correct. 32,000 base, 4,000 for the budget would bring it to 36,000. He then says that he gave 1,000 of that to the consultant for the budget. So that would bring his earnings to 35,000 even. 
his W-2 says he earned 33,253. So that shows a difference of $1,747. But um, you got to deduct the $976 I paid for into that for my insurance. And the 600 is 28 that I paid. That brings it down to 33,233. Uh, isn't isn't the money that you pay towards your insurance part of your salary? It takes it off the top of the base, yes. What was that number, Mr. Harry? That difference? One thousand seven hundred forty-seven dollars. That's thirty-two base. Four thousand added is thirty-six. A thousand off for the uh, consultant brings him to thirty-five. Even is what his salary should have been, and his W two shows that his earnings were thirty-three, two fifty-three and fifty-nine cents. That's a difference of one thousand seven hundred and forty-seven dollars. That's the deductions from the health insurance. Nine well, seven. Just, did I? Unless I misunderstood, you just said that was nine hundred and something. And this is 1,700. Yeah, those three numbers add up to 1765 of my revenue. That's correct. Pretty close to what Mr. Harry was saying. This is what I'm getting from our bookkeeper, case care of it. I appreciate his concerns. If he wants to come in and go over it in black and white right there, uh, this is what I got from me that I got from our book. Mr. Molino, I have in front of me a copy of your W 2 form that was provided by the town right. that, that shows your earnings. And that's the figure I'm using. I don't need know why I would need to come in and discuss it. You folks are the ones that provided me with this information. And that's what I have here, exactly what you're saying. Well, you said that you were earning 35,000 and that is not correct for the year of 2021. You were earning 32,000. Um, I apologize, I can't help you. I'm going by what they're telling me. Um, I'm not looking for apologies. I'm, I wanna know where that $1,747 is. I'm a taxpayer. I'm entitled to know where these funds are. If you add those three figures, that's where it is. Add those three figures up. Which three figures would you like me to add? 97604, 62868, and 161.72. And you're saying that those, those fees that you pay are not part of your salary. Is that correct? Oh, they come out of your they salary. They come out of my salary. That just drops the salary down to 33. Well, from the 32, is that just taxable? All right. Yeah. All right. I'm going to have to leave it there. The two minutes are up. I, I'll have to get you better information. I just don't know Colleen, your answer. <clears throat> Colleen Mr. Has, Mr. Colleen has Molino, Mr. Molino, if I could just remind you. Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Uh, your two minute um, rule that you discuss refers to comments. I'm asking questions of possible wrongdoing. So I think that you should hear me out and provide me with answers. If you decide not to, uh, you are probably violating my First Amendment rights. Do you want to let Colleen talk? Maybe I have can... our, uh, Colleen is on with us. Maybe she can help you out and explain it better than I do. Colleen, okay. would you help me out? <laughs> You're on call. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I do not have the numbers in front of me, but I know that every board member there and the attorney, along with Gene, everybody sitting there has a copy of the email I sent tonight. Gene's gross wages were $35,003. When you deduct the cost of his health insurance, his vision, and his dental, it comes down to the penny of what his W-2 reports as his gross taxable wages, because those are his gross taxable wages. 
Okay. I, can you hear me, ma'am? I don't know if I can speak with you. Can you hear me? Yep. Um, he just gave me three figures of 976, 628, and 161. Um, and th if you add them up and deduct them from 35,000, it does not come out to the number you're referring to, I believe. I do not. Did he give you? Uh, there are three numbers that you need to deduct. He told, he just told me a few minutes ago, 976, 628, and 161. 604, and 628, 68, and 16172. Okay. And that, those numbers deducted from 35,000.03 cents. Come out to what? 3323359. Okay, so that the difference of 1747 is, is what? It is a difference. So, okay. I, like I said, I do not have the email in front of me. I had done all of the math and mm -hmm. it came out. And could, I mean, one of the, can you, I, Mr. I wasn't Crow, aware that... or does the math on the email that I sent you today come out correct? It's correct, yeah. Colleen. I, it is correct, I wasn't, Lori? Yeah, it is. It's correct. The math and the email is correct. Okay, I wasn't aware that those deductions were pre-taxable. That's all. Yes, the health insurance deductions are pre-taxable. So therefore, his gross taxable wages <laughs> are minus the all of the costs of the health insurance and the dental and vision insurance. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Um, do you have anything else? Uh, I do with my report. Okay. Let's just start with your report. Okay. Um, I, I've given the board um, our monthly clerk report and the zoning officer report. And today we received a um, resignation letter dated 214-22 to the town clerk and town board of Lake Luzerne. I'm writing this letter as my formal resignation from the Lake Luzerne town board as a councilman. The effective date will be today, 214-22. After much consideration, I've decided this is currently the best decision for me. Respectfully, David O'Neill. I've given you other correspondence. Uh, one was Mr. Herring's, uh, a letter from June Woodard over on Paul Street. You have that regarding the um, farm animals in the road. And I believe that's all I have. You have Rick's letter. Um, General Code reached out to us today and um, Cindy let them know that uh, she would talk to the board and see what you guys were going to do. Um, explain to them that she'd been out um, with an injury and whatnot and would like to start moving forward with that. Um, what was that like? General code, the complication of records. Um, you also got another letter from Mr. Herring. Uh, regarding, it was dated February 9th, which I believe you guys all have that, uh, regarding zoning enforcement. That's all I have. Any reports? Mr. Fabio? Thank you. Uh, let me just put my notes real quick. Right. Um, 
Well, I wanted to bring up, you asked me, did you ask me or Gene? I'm sorry, Laura, I thought you said me. Oh, me? Okay. Oh, just some things that we talked about at the agenda meeting is, you know, open up the talking about opening the meetings back up to the public again. So I can make a lot of people happy and get out from behind this Zoom thing because all they can seem to hear is me, I guess. Um, so I just got a nice email, real respectful email on that. Um, I wanted to let everybody know our defibrillators are on back order, um, probably another two to three weeks before we get them. You know, welcome to today's world. So hopefully, uh, you know, we'll keep our fingers crossed that we don't need them in the interim, but they are on the way. Um, Jamie Kranz, our director, sent me an email on our uh, YouTube channel. It does require that everything is closed captioned for the ADA compliance. Obviously, we want to uh, follow that to the to the T, so everybody can see, you know, what the, what we have to say and what's being done for business. That's a, a company contract that would be twenty dollars a month um, to have that done. So, you know, that's pretty vital if we want to move forward with what we talked about doing. And uh, just want to put that out there for everybody to know. And uh, we already talked about some of the money being returned if it wasn't used. We talked about it. At the agenda meeting, Gene, if what about the occupancy tax and stuff? I've got, I've got the paperwork. It, it's been way, way, way back when. As, uh, as long as you keep using it for promotion, hmm? you can't use it for anything else. And you have paper. I have all the paper. So we're covered. Yep. Good. And then, uh, got, are you going to talk about uh, the water report that uh, our water guy sent us a couple of weeks ago? Or do you want me to bring that up? Or yeah. just that he's, you know, it's going good. Uh, he's doing a great he's job. Excellent. Yeah. It's a very good hire. I think we're fortunate to have him. Do you know if Chazen came down there and went through the building like they were supposed to to help look at everything? Remember, we made that motion to have them. Okay, so we have to. Uh, check that out. Yeah. And then uh, what else do we have here? He did a great job last week, you know, when the power went out. Absolutely. We lost the pump when the power well, flashed the pump there. Just Relay was broke, but he didn't know what it was. I called the electrician, they came right up. And it was just a relay, and we happened to have one on the shelf, which was good, and we showed them how to change it. So uh, we didn't lose any, any water or anything. It's just the, the, the pump was good because he could run it by hand. That's why we <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. Um, yeah, that's good. I think he's doing a great job too. So that, that was a good hire that we, uh, we made. They were lucky to have him. He's redoing that old place. Do we do all the lock changing on that like we had talked about? Okay. Um, and then I just have the uh, uh, assessor and uh, court report from Melissa, another employee that we have does a great job. Uh, court's running as usual. She just wanted to inquire about the progress of hiring that constable so he can, you know, wand people and put a little security in the court. We're definitely moving forward with that, hopefully. Well, we got resident, resident, yeah, we got um, some applications for employment, which have mm -hmm. everybody a copy. Yeah. I think we should start bringing these people in and maybe just have one or two people interview them. We can't have more. It's a meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, see if we can hire some people. Uh, we still can't get the, the, the ones we really need. Everybody's having a problem, yep. but unfortunately. I think along with anything, does with the building the ground situation. I think that the supervisor down in that position, the okay, or the board or whatever you want to call them, should be involved in that decision making and let him be in, in that meeting. The interviews for sure. Oh, right. yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah, so, Most definitely. right. So, and then again, the assessor's office, you know, it was our understanding the town will not be opting into the executive order allowing senior exemptions to carry over from last year. That's correct, right? We're gonna, Mike, is that correct? We're gonna go, right? So uh, she has received approximately 50% of the renewals to date. She's sending her reminders to, reminders to the other half to have until March 1st to apply, two weeks before the deadline. Again, Melissa going over and above, she'll call any homeowners that she's missing applications from, at which time she'll offer to pick them up herself. So how do you beat that, right? Um, She's very busy working on permit reviews, 121 permits in 2021, all exemption applications, nonprofit, charitable, religious, agricultural, senior, et cetera, processing sales and map changes, preparing my annual mobile home park review sheets, and completing any other activities that come across the desk. It's a very busy time of the year for this office that she hopes all is well with all of us. So 
She did. Do you, know, do you know if that uh, iPad came in for you guys yet? That we ordered, Colleen ordered. There's an iPad that came in. Okay, so we can work forward then with getting. Yeah, I think that um, Chris Fountain is looking into it. The program, whatever. Oh, we are. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so all right. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, we've got four or five letters expressing an interest to be on either the zoning board or the planning board. Um, I think we should move along with that as well. So, set of interviews. Mm -hmm. You want to um, set something up on like Monday nights? Some seem to be the best of all of us. Now that we're spread now, we can spare on Monday night to maybe next Monday to do the interviews for the zoning and planning and, and also for anybody employment to keep them separated by hours. Take care of all one night. Well, that kind of falls under human resources right there. I got four. I think it's three planning board and one zoning board. We could use it for one evening, right? Yeah. Um, who who wants to make that happen? We had to table our committee assignments, but I was chairman of the zoning board for quite a while. I'd be comfortable working on that. Next Monday is a holiday. So. President's Day. Right, this Monday. What's that holiday? President's Day. Then the one day after that's our agenda meeting. Okay. So maybe two, two, Tuesday the 22nd. You want to go to I'm just putting it out there. Oh, you You're right. We call you two of us, right? Well, no, we call that a, a, a workshop. We'll be back meeting and we have all of us there. Oh, okay. So yeah. it's interview uh, for employees. Is it public or executive? I don't know. It, yeah, a workshop is just like any other type of meeting. Okay. You, know, you have to advertise it. And uh, you don't necessarily have to have um, public comment, but it's a public meeting. Well, this is employment, though. Doesn't that fall under possible at present stage under uh, uh, special meeting in uh, employment? Is that, that, would, is that called employment? It's only for a planning board? Uh, they get paid. Uh, yeah. I'd have to look at you're saying go into executive session. That is correct. Uh, potentially do that if you want to pay for it together. That is correct. My preference would be to let people hear. On the zoning board, and that I'm not trying to hit the run. I'm talking about oh, okay. the other employment. I was talking about zoning. Okay, sorry. Excuse me. But we got to do both at some point. There's nobody in here for constable or anything. It's all buildings and grounds. Constable, cleaner. Mm -hmm. um, I don't believe we've even put out for that position, have we? Right. Oh, it's all on the yeah. yeah. Which one? Constable. constable. Uh, the only one I know. We had put it out a while back. Yeah. On the. The only one we've got open right now, I believe, is the one for buildings and grounds. Correct. We can repost that. Uh, mm -hmm. Couple of buildings. Yeah, we have this one by the applications coming to us. Let me tell us what they what we have. Uh, I'm not sure what's what you want. What we want to do. All the same thing. Planning and zoning, and then buildings and grounds. Planning and zoning. Talking about 10, 11 people at 15 minutes a person, which isn't really um, adequate for in some instances, you're talking three hours. Yeah. More than that, four hours. So that, that doesn't seem to be feasible in one night. Yes, and we do it. How about we do the, the applications for the, uh, the workers? Zoning and planning to be the following Monday. Uh, uh, 
at the present time, have we got a completed board? And planning and zoning? No. no. We're short a number on both boards and short an alternate on both boards. I thought it was two alternates and oh. one member. Was it all no, the uh, regular and so and an alternate mm -hmm. and zoning we need an alternate yeah. that's because we moved Burgess in right right all right so we need one, one alternate for the zoning and we need an alternate and a regular for the planning board and in I've been here since May the end of May 2018 and we've never done interviews for those positions it's always just been volunteered so i'm not sure what you're looking for but um it's possible that you might be able to just have like two board members and have them meet in my office explain to them what the boards do and i don't know what you're looking for in in giving the interview this is the first time it's happened since i've been here Karen, at the present time, many of the people that have uh, responded to your opening, has the rest of the board on those two committees looked at those? I haven't even got them. We just got them all today. Okay, uh, well, I'm asking that because usually you guys' recommendation to us. Not for new members. No. No. No, they usually just send a letter of interest and they're appointed by the board. I, I, when I was chairman, I, I did do that on one occasion. You did? Yeah. If, I just, I'm not sure what you're going for. So, I mean, I'm not saying well, we don't have, do it. It's, I'm just saying, I don't know we have one, what that one. process is. We got a, a lot of people applied. Really, and the worst thing we can do is just prejudge, in my opinion, by just looking at a piece of paper and getting somebody's personality, enthusiasm, yeah, all that stuff. That. So, I don't know. We have to pick. I agree, and I don't. I don't want to pick. There could be the best sleeper out there, and we don't. Oh, just because we don't know the name, we overlook him and, yeah. and leave that I'm guy on the scrap heap. Does it have to be a meeting? Can it just be done a couple of people meeting and then follow up? Yeah, does a full board do you as as a full board you want to talk to them is what you're telling correct? I'm not speaking for everybody. I'd like to meet them all. I know that because I don't want to vote against somebody I haven't met. That's not fair. It okay. really isn't. I wouldn't want it done to me. I agree. I just made the list here. We have three people uh, with an interest in the planning board and one interest in zoning. They, they want the full board, Gene. They want every. They want the board wants to talk to the people. Oh, the, our board. Your board. Okay, that's fine. And we have to do it at night. Get them all here. Okay. Can I chime in? Go ahead. <laughs> um, if there's only one for the zoning, do you really? I mean, you probably want to meet the person. Yes, but. Um, as far as like conducting an interview or anything, part of the reason this has never been done is because we've never had a lot of interest. Right. So we just take the people when they volunteer, we're like, okay, you know. Um, but I mean, the three for planning, yeah, you have to pick two out of the three. So that makes sense. But you might not really want to do the zoning as an interview. I don't know. Just just my thought. Could, could you in your spare time? What spare time? What check time? to make sure that I have all the names. Yes. I have Mr. Michael Bordell mm -hmm. with a letter for CBA. Mm -hmm. And I have Chris Riker, Howard Schaefer, and Jason Tyler. That sounds correct, but yes, I'll know what we're planning for mm -hmm. yeah. okay. I don't want to leave anybody out that's showing interest. Okay. All right, so we're gonna. You want to do buildings and grounds first, though, right? Because you need help. That's what. Because that's our most pressing need, probably, yeah. right? Yeah. The other boards can function. Yeah, we could wait a month, or you know, between these uh, meetings, just once a month. So I'd like to do the applications for uh, regular workers. How many are we gonna write? Well, we definitely need one in buildings and grounds and a part time. I'd like to get somebody up at the transit station part of the time. 
to learn the job up there. So we all say we were going on up there. We're probably on our two we were looking for two people originally. What we got? Four? I got uh, six. Six. Yeah, I have six. And these are all part time positions. Both positions are going to be part time. Because we've floated around maybe hiring a full timer. Yeah. I think one full, we need one full time. You guys kind of said one full time and part time. That's full kind of what we've been telling everybody. That comes in that. Well, I would need to. There's two vehicles buildings and rounds. This one doesn't have a preference. This is buildings and rounds and cleaner. Now, this could be a part time person right there. Work a little bit in buildings and grounds and partly just cleaning in this building. And then another one just says labor. And another, most of them all buildings and grounds, really, they all build in the ground basically. So we should be able to find, you know, one and a half, maybe even two if we can press. Let's go Tuesday the 22nd. Tuesday the 22nd, is that the day? Yeah. What time? Seven o'clock for employees. Seven o'clock with you, Paul. I'm sorry. Seven o'clock Tuesday. 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 We'll, get, we'll get all phone calls out tomorrow. So, is, are we setting a meeting or a workshop? Or... It will be. set up. I mean, as a workshop is meeting. Right. But we'll go into executive session for this, right? Because you don't interview people for a job in the right. general public, right? Okay, so it's going to be a meeting and then part of the discussion might be dollars and cents. Yeah, well, we have to, that's another thing we have to come up with. But we got we pretty much close to what we have to be speaking on May, so. Um, okay, so I need a motion to second. Make a motion. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Hearing none, carry. All right. I passed out uh, just tonight a summary of our mill foil bids. Uh, we sent out five requests for proposals. One of them, and, and we got that list from the Adirondack Park Agency. Right there. Uh, one of them was out of business. The Lingo Mill Foil uh, out of May was one bit because it's too far away. Base dive solutions and turn that clay is concerned you won't be able to get the staff. So we got two bids out of five RFPs. Um, if, if you have this, this is what I'm looking at. Um, we asked for two prices in the bids using our boat and not using our boat. Uh, Aqualogic daily rate using our boats $100. AE commercial diving did not bid using our boat. They don't want to use our boat. If you multiply that out by 60 days, which is our guesstimate as to how many days you need to have that in the water sucking up weeds, it'll be 66 hours. Uh, daily rate from Aqualogic using their own boat is $1,400. So our boat's going to save us about $300 a day. AD commercial diving using their own boat is $1,750 a day. If you multiply that up in 60 days, Aqualizing is 84000 using their own boat. AD commercial diving is 105000 using their own boat. So the committee kind of got together, no, the committee got together and we went through the proposals. And our feeling perhaps you can call it a recommendation, is that the uh, higher bidder, although his proposal was a little bit better, the paper was a little nicer, better pictures, we felt as though that Aqualogic is a better value for the town, that the better proposal is not worth that much more money. So I guess my question, this is probably to Mike, the rest of us, what do we do now? have 40 in the budget and we get the county money. 
which was roughly around the 40. 42, 42, a little less than 42. Yeah, that's right. an increase of 30. $32,000 the last time we did your capital. Um, the other um, budgeting thought is I'm estimating we probably only used seven or eight from last year. We had a study done, which was three five thousand to go on, on putting the sump the new pumps on. We did a three thousand dollar study. Yeah, come on. Yeah, How we done? Last year's pumps. Can we take a break for a minute? The year before. The year before. Because we did it in December, so we got some more ready for the first. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that was taken out. The rest of the funds from the year before we got a point. That was that $5,000 that we could put the small pump in the hoses. Mm -hmm. And I can lie and say why they increased $32,000 from the year before. No, it wasn't asked. I was surprised that supply and demand is in supply and demand. You know what I mean? These guys all know each other. I, I, think, I think that's the same way they are trying to do on the screen. It is exactly the same. Exactly the same. Is it really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's okay. He did a good job for us. Uh, but we wanted to keep him under the floor. That's good. Uh, Brent. Brent. Oh, it's the same thing. So that all comes back to what we think. We've got 40, it's 42,000, oh, yeah. approximately 41,666,000 coming in to play Asian Nova Lake in the county. Yeah. That leaves us 24,000 monthly. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, I should probably say this is stuff on the record. Well, we're going to want to make a good, solid effort to try to get approved to use that facilitator. Because if we get that approved, we can probably go through four years and not have to do anything. Thank you. 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 But you still have to be part of it. Did you hand us a copy of the written out the actual proposal? Yeah. The request for proposal? Yeah. Uh, anything else? I can't I'm over here with my head up. I mean, it looks like a lot of fun. I'm hoping you can see me. Let's see another picture of me. I have to go to the other side. Leslie, part of that proposal too, he's got three people now. He's got two. I want to meet the next time I come in here. Trying to watch the neck and my work is on the screen. Last year's proposal was two. I've got three in time. Thank you. I'm ready when you're ready. Yep. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. 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 Well, now, now we have to decide to either take the, the lowest bidder and like, get moving on it or, or table it and maybe go out, try again to get more bids. That's up to you, John. But the longer we wait, the tougher it's going to be. Well, I would strongly discourage trying to get more bids because we don't know anybody else in Stone Park. And when I say we, I'm talking about the call from Adron and Park Agency, I forget his name, uh, Larry Eichler, Larry Eichler, Darren, Tracy, our own planner. Um, you know, 
maybe I should buy a scuba tank. I haven't used one in 40 years. That would be a great summer job. All right. It's my opinion that we should move forward. As sad as I am to hear it's, it's such a cost increase from, from last year. Well, what's question, what question? What can, did you talk to Aqualogic, Jimmy? Yeah. Because what concerns me is they could have quoted a dollar last year and it didn't matter because they had no help, yeah. right? Have, what's their labor situation right now? He's telling us he's fine. Okay. Guaranteed. Am I worried about it? Absolutely. Absolutely. Guaranteed. Uh, the word guaranteed wasn't used, which, which brings, brings me, if we do move forward, I'm wondering what your opinion is about some kind of uh, lack of performance clause in the contract. I don't know if he would agree to it. He probably wouldn't. But... To some degree, you wouldn't need it. I mean, to some degree, if you have the contract established and there is no performance, that's going to generate a, a breach of the contract, regardless of what circumstance it is. He has to help you. you know, he's getting a higher rate somewhere else. Or he doesn't have the help, or he just doesn't want to do it. Um, if you have a breach contract, um, that's going to open that um, potential party up to the, the cost. To, uh, if we lose, if we lose another year harvesting in that lake, we will be suffering damage. May not be financial, but the lake itself is the one that's going to suffer, and all the residents that that live around it and care about it. We got lucky last year. I don't know why, but no foil did not take off like crazy last year. So it's not too bad. So you, you would have, just to clarify, you would have legal recourse for somebody not performing. You wouldn't have the environmental recourse. Okay, so if um, there's no performance and no one else is able to then provide the service, then there isn't. A, uh, a provision that somehow then the lake still gets the appropriate amount of service, there would be potentially no um, legal and financial um, avenues to recover against the breach of contract. But I think what you're saying is there's a potential cost to the lake for not having the service done. Yeah. Which could be financial, Mike, if we have to hire somebody with a gun to our head and pay top dollar to have them come in and try and remedy that. That could be a financial hardship for the town that we wouldn't have experienced if they had fulfilled their obligations. Sure, correct. Or, or you could find somebody who's um, cheaper prices could, could go down. You could have people crawling out of the woodwork, in which case, um, you know, you'd have a, a benefit. But um, yeah, I mean, if you could find somebody to do the work, then that would fall into the legal remedies that you'd be able to pursue. Mm -hmm. One of the most common uh, class of people that use the lake is kayakers, canoers. And I can guarantee to you those people look at the environment. And there's no doubt in my mind that that would be less attractive if they're pedaling through the piles of meat. So I think it would be a hard to measure for the small tourism impact as well. So what do we want to do? Well, I think you can move ahead, but I think we should grab him in here and then uh, Eden Jesus discuss yeah. about are you going to hold to, to the contract or are you going to, you know, he's, he's got to commit. I, uh, I would like to propose that we Ask Mike to go ahead and work on the contract and bring it up in our next, put it on our next agenda. Our contract with the Ecologic. Yeah. Get that ready to fly so we can sign it if we agree to it. Mm -hmm. So that we can make a commitment with him you know, before the 1st of April. Yeah. 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 And I'll pester everybody to make sure that the concerns get addressed or 
What about the concerns from last year with Aqualogic? You, I know you weren't around, but Paul, you were. They have they have don't keep records. They couldn't tell us where they bought this boat from that well, they sold us. Well, not just that, Mike. Like you were saying, I'm sorry. Go ahead, please. No, nope, go ahead. Okay, no accountability. Yep. Uh, they they clipped the hull numbers off the boat when they took it up to do a service. They couldn't tell us where it came from, who they bought it from, who they cut the check to, because they don't keep any records. So if this is the company we want to get right back in bed with again, we, I'm, uh, they, they signed a the contract. And didn't they did it. nothing. Yeah. And then we had to fight to get the money back. And then we still didn't get all the parts back that they were supposed to give us, as far as I know, unless that pump. Did we get them back? All right, finally, good. good. So, perfect. Yeah, that's that air pump that's full of mud that they looks like was stored yeah. out of the mud. Yep. Yeah. So if we want to. Which worked. I talked to. Uh, and Sharks, I can't remember the APA thing. They actually like Aqualogic's work. Now, it has not much to do with the types of issues you were just talking about in terms of their on site grazing no oil sucking. They'll actually give them a recommendation. Mm -hmm. That's the best I could do to address. Yeah. Well, they didn't talk with the lady up there, Jim. I did. When I called there, she, she wouldn't even talk to me. She was rude and she hung up on me. Whoever the secretary was that answered the phone when we called about the boat that day. So we didn't go digging anything up. Like I said, we were just reacting to information that was brought forth. They were totally uncooperative and slammed the door in our face. So whatever that's worth, if anything. They have invited Jane and me up to see their, and the rest. their, their facility. I don't need to see I look at the lake. That's all I care about. I don't care how shiny their showroom is or what kind of tools they have. It means nothing to me. What means something to me is everything that we talked about already. The lake, the canoers pet going through it, the possibility that we get no milfoil extracted again this year like last year. That's what matters, not not what their facility looks like in, in Brant Lake. Not, not to be rude, I'll go up there with you if you want, but that's not the most important thing. It's what they do down here in Lake Luzerne for our I taxpayers. That's it. Show me, don't tell me. And I was told I was picking on them and everything else when I asked for accountability. Yeah. Well, that's um, the knee jerk answer. For not, that's a knee jerk answer we all get. Okay. I know where we're coming and I know where your understanding is. It's the almighty dollar, but at the same time, a number of years have gone on with this corporation that we're looking at that the first years was supposed to be 20 ton and it got dropped and it got dropped and uh, the last time they picked I believe it was 8 ton okay that was pulled out of the uh, waste slips that our employees take uh, time to weigh their uh, trailer weights at the end of the week and uh, I addressed the tonnage issue. In fact, um, <clears throat> all five people we sent it to were more than willing to talk about tonnage, which to me lends a little bit of credibility to the three that didn't bid it because they don't have a horse in the race. All everybody said they wouldn't touch a performance contract because we have gotten the mill foil under control so that the amount of mill foil to collect is sure. much more sparse than this, uh, this person around the lake now. So right. Well, if it's not there, you can't ask them to pick it. I'm not disagreeing with those factors. The only thing is, is myself living right on the lake, documenting they were there X amount of days. They came back with another study saying they were here. Well, I have volunteer and I suspect that maybe assignments will work out that way to be the town board liaison to that and all you know my capabilities in that regard. Oh I'm not good doubt your capabilities of doing it. That's why we talked about putting a time clock in the bathroom facilities yes. so they can punch in and out. Are your concerns I agree that they're, they're their legitimate concern. But are your concerns um, uh, perhaps suggesting the higher bidder is the better price? I'm just I'm just stating a fact. I know nothing and about the other bidder. I know that. I, I just know what we dealt with last year. 
Okay. All I can say is what I've seen and what I know. Is it better for the, the higher cost? Maybe they'll pick more. I don't know. I just say if we go with the firm that you're talking about, that it is set up, that uh, accountability is done 100% in regards to time in, time out. I want to know how many tanks they're going through in a course of a day. Air tanks? Air tanks. Okay. Uh, you know yourself as a president. A diver, you can only go down so many times with tanks on, okay? And then you're supposed to change to another person, okay? Now, when they go out in the morning and they got three tanks <laughs> on the boat and they've been out there for eight hours, and the biggest tank you can get, if I'm not mistaken, is a 40 minute tank, okay? You might get an hour, but uh, your points. Okay. Shallow water, you probably get probably an hour. Out. Okay, so you got two, three tanks, three hours. And here they are, they're going to perform a duty of eight hours of men in the water. Unless you're giving them an hour set up, an hour breakdown. Okay, so six hours, three tanks. I rest my case. That's the most I saw ever go on that boat was three tanks. And that's why I want somehow, if we decide to go with them, uh, some way to do a, accountability exactly. I don't mind paying more money for somebody as long as the facts are there. If these people are willing to put it down and show us, I got no problem with that. The past experience, I'm sorry. I will vote against you. That's my feeling. Thank you. I'm looking to see what we asked for in terms of reporting what we asked in the RFP. Well, that's Gene, did you ever get a weekly report with uh, GPS coordinates? No, no. Well, that's what it says in their contract of last year. They're supposed to do a weekly GPS coordinate on that lake, filing with us, so we know it's last year, but I didn't have or the year before, excuse me, and to designate exactly where they've been picking by the G GPS coordinates, okay, so they can go back later and look at those coordinates to see how fast it's coming back and everything else, and nothing was done. And we paid them $34,000. I'm sorry. The RFP calls for weekly reports, harvesting reports, invoices each week. We included the uh, that from the uh, Darren report, and that's going to be the basis for setting up coordinates to report the amount of weeds taken out where. Can we table this or something and get on with this meeting? All this is supposed to be done at agenda. And here we are spending an hour on this. Can we? Can we? This is not an agenda, right? Well, is there a motion on the table? Let's either table or, or move on. I don't know if I'm out of line here or not, but geez, I don't know if we need it, but I, I would do it. I would say we should do as I suggested, which is 
you're working on the contract, get the questions answered and put it on next month's agenda. With the goal that the questions are solidly answered and, and the, the board uh, so votes that we can proceed with right after our next meeting. I don't know if we need a motion to say let's go ahead and get the contract ready or not. <coughs> I don't have a problem getting the contract together. Mm -hmm. no, it's time for me. We can we can get that going regardless of who you go with and we can you know get the skeleton of a, a contract ready to, to go and if there's any um I know the importance in regards to uh, we're running out of time. Plain and plain and simple. It should have been done three months ago. Okay. So that's all we're gonna do. Get the framework of a contract put together, Mike, and then we'll fill in the blanks as we as we need to, right? Exactly. Okay. So at the agenda, I'll email you some stuff tomorrow, which is like a logic last contract. Not that we need to follow that. Yeah, no, I'd like to see that. And I'll send you the RFP and you'll just see what the RFP and out. then whatever submissions okay. present to you. Okay. I'll, I'll get that to you uh, probably tomorrow. That's fine. Wednesday, too late. That's fine. Uh, next thing I have is <clears throat> we got a letter. January 20, state of January 22, we got a 26. Um, Lori mentioned it briefly earlier from a lady up on the uh, Hall Street, Corinth Road, whatever you want to call it, about a couple of houses down the road or goats and ducks and stuff are getting out on the road and it's, it's going to cause an accident. Uh, Brett Moulton's been there at least two times. He can remember, he thinks he's been there three times, and each time he had the state police with him, and they all agree sooner or later it's going to cause an accident. Karen looked into the zoning, and, and, and they are allowed to have animals in that zone, so it's not a zoning violation. Our zoning book does not have anything in it about animals getting out of the pens. So Karen has, Karen chimed in if I'm wrong, Karen has basically, basically no jurisdiction to. To say you're in violation because your goats got out of the pen. Um, I was wondering what we should do. Uh, somebody has brought up are there agricultural laws that might come into play here uh, from a legal standpoint, or do we want to do anything? Uh, I took a ride by there and I could see the problem. There wasn't animals out the bay I went by, but I could see how animals could get out because the property is, is in tough shape. Does the right that they have animals there, Karen, have any worrying that they need to be adequately enclosed or contained? It just basically states that they got, you know, if a fence is provided, what that, where it can be placed, that kind of thing, and that they have to have shelter. They have that there. It's just that the, it's in bad repair at times and they get out. Um, I've spoken with Mr. Bolton. He came into my office. I gave him the zoning ordinance. We talked about it. There's not much I can do zoning wise with it. That's why it was turned over to the well, I'm going to say animal control person. Because it's actually putting the animals yeah. in danger as well as the public. They get hit That's with a why truck. He, you know, he has had state police with him when he goes up there. The, uh, the letter says, the questions, perhaps the health of the animals in terms of being fed and so on and so forth. But Mr. Moulton said he didn't see any evidence of neglect from that perspective. So I, I, I just don't want stuff like this to just fall through the cracks. I think Mike would have to look in to see what our powers of enforcement are. We yeah. can't do something we're not empowered to do. Um, I guess I, I don't know um, if I've seen that letter, so um, I can grab a copy of it. I'll take a look at what's in there, and then uh, definitely if there's something in any markets that we can uh, use as an enforcement tool, or um, you know, I think through um, uh, you know more law enforcement. Um, now, one thing that that uh, Brett said. And the neighbor also said is they've never been able to talk to the owner about it because he works so much, he's never there. This one. Yeah. Okay. You, you, um, can have, you can have bushes and shrubs, but if you have bushes and shrubs that are impeding uh, safe passage of the town highway, uh, you can't have 
two pushes in the truck. So that you can still, you can be um, in compliance with zoning, but still create a safety issue. There you go. Can we, can we as a board, send them a letter saying these are the problems, showing them what we have, and the next time they come up, we've got to come in front of this board and explain to us. Yeah, let me look into a case of what the different types of um, avenues you have to pursue and what sort of enforcement mechanisms you can uh, put in place. Karen, anybody else in that neighborhood ever send you anything? No, I've only heard from this one person. Moving on, uh, buildings and grounds south, is that the result? Buildings and grounds and points south, is that the yeah, we have, to, we have to talk about that. Taking that lead, I, I, I think that I think we talked about it. You said we might even need a permissive referendum to increase their, their salary a certain percentage. And the budget I had was six. If we do five, because I think it's it's hurting a little bit of morale. Just a little. Uh, just. Bringing it up as a reminder. Okay. Um, you know, I, I think we should settle something and get it done. And if it's a slight increase in salary, let's do it. Um, but we can't let it go into too much money. That's up to you, gentlemen. I, I know what I want to do. Not saying that Ron's guys aren't worth what they got, but some of you got quite a lot to do as well. I think the rest of them should get a little extra. They have also cost of living increases. Prices are going up every place you go. I can't believe just the just gas. I mean, you drive a truck, Mike. You know, I just filled my truck up with seventy dollars. I'm going to do two swipes with my card to fill my truck up. No, so I think they have a legitimate bit. You have a couple of them. From them. It's just something that was overlooked. Nothing, nobody did any malicious thing to do it. It just got overlooked. And I think the other two thirds of the employees uh, deserve well, a little cost of the living. I think there's other people that should, certain things should have been addressed also. Yeah, work in this I mean, if, you, if you want, I'll stop reminding people that we ought to do it. No, no, you can't do it. It's got to be done. It's got to be a decision. One way we leave it like it is, and take it up at the end of this year, or um, retroactive a, a little something. You can't have a ha unhappy with employees. It, it affects us more. Especially when you just leave it out there. The worst decision you can make is none. The way I look at it, it right. just keeps right. people percolating and, and right. stories flying and you know disenchantment. I, it's my opinion, Gene, that you should make us a proposal and we should talk about it tomorrow. I can make a proposal right now because I had six percent across the board for everybody, and it was changed for buildings and going out. I mean, for a highway, which deserved. Um, at the same time, people that do the other jobs, even though they might be secretaries or they might. The grass cutters or whatever they are, they're still employees, they still work, and they have to support their families too. So, I mean, I'd, I'd like to see something, maybe another 2% added to that rate. And that'll be a little happy medium for everybody. So we'll put that on the agenda for next time. The agenda meeting? Yeah. So it doesn't go another two months? Yeah. yeah. Put I started to try to put together who the 15 committee members are for our technical advisory committee, I think it's called, which is the comprehensive master plan. I got some stuff from Cindy, and I think I found out who 14 of them are, and one of them just resigned. Uh, so I'm trying to get names, phone numbers, and stuff like that together. All I have so far is names and emails, which I just got a couple of days ago. So I'm working on that. Mike, you brought up open meetings, right? Excuse me. You brought it brought it going back to open meetings. Yeah, open that's to the public. Like to yeah. Talk about tonight. And yeah, that's that's why I brought it up. Nobody said anything. That's why I brought it up. So well, I, I thought I, maybe I we didn't. Want to. Before I did today, I to talk about okay. it. Well, let's talk I about it. My, my, my part I think it's time. I think you know. I think things are getting better. Um, 
I don't think they'll ever clear up 100% for a while. Um, masks are now optional. Yeah. Um, it doesn't have to be, though. If we want people to wear them, you can have them wear them. They have, yeah. They might have to wear them. We, that's our decision. But then again, if we're there, gonna, then we have to. The fact that we're not doing it right now, I'm not going to be hypocritical about it. No. I don't feel it's it's worthy of anything. I really don't. So I'm not going to vote to wear, wear make anybody wear a mask if I'm not going to wear one myself. That's not how I, I operate. Can we vote on it tonight? Or do yeah. we need to? I, I, I think we ought to open it back up on the March meeting. Yep. All of all the public meetings in the building. Not the agenda. Are you comfortable with that, Karen? She's part of the other meeting, so I'd like to hear uh, what she meeting, has to say. Uh, we said the March meeting, so if we said uh, the second. Meeting, say beginning of March, then I I have one more meeting this month, planning board. Right now, I don't have anything on the agenda, so it may end up even being canceled. So, okay. Lori, what day would that be for our regular meeting in March? Mm -hmm. And I mean, you know, we're discussing it now. We use that as the uh, agenda yeah. that and, and do it on a workshop. No, <laughs> okay. Our, I'd like to see it on our regular, not our agenda meeting, because okay. our agenda meeting is going to be February twenty eighth. February twenty eighth. That gives us two more weeks to do what? To open it up to the public. If we do it at that meeting, yeah, yeah. that's what I'm saying. What we're do we? We, we have to. We don't have to do anything to prepare for it or anything, uh, do we? Uh, no. So when are you going to open it up to the public? Our agenda meeting is on February 28th, and then the town board meeting is March 14th. That's what I think it should be. March 14th. We open it March 14th, not yeah. the side. But what about the We're people coming in to the building daily, and and we still have mass required signs up? Are we? Are you going to reset well, that? We can almost take them down right now. Everybody else, did. even the municipal center. I went to motor vehicles the other day. They they weren't wearing them. The stores, you go in the stores. Yeah, I know. But so, I mean, why are we I mean, keeping had, our people? You know? What's your thoughts, Lori? You, you see a lot of people every day coming through. Do you are you good with it? Um, whatever you guys decide. No, I we I, I value your opinion because you're the one that's in the face of the crowd every day. So, I'd like to hear what you have to say for everybody else is willing. Well, we can I'm, still wear our masks. yeah. We can still wear them if we feel comfortable. I personally will be wearing mine for the most part. And basically, I just said that yesterday to somebody because they said, Gene, you don't need a mask on. I said, well, it's not a water force. So you didn't turn the water off and it stopped to run. I'm mean, going another week. So I think by two weeks from now, uh, we could decide. We've had people coming in with and without masks yeah, so in the last week. Yeah. Yeah. So our agenda meeting for March, is it, our agenda meeting is February, February 28th. 28th. Right. I talked about um, switching back on February 28th. No, no we, have to, we have to vote now tonight. I'm saying opening it up on our regular meeting, which is March 14th. 14th. Okay, but Are you Karen, making a motion? Hold on. Karen would be having a ZBA meeting prior to that said. on the top. So you're going to say, that? oh, the Zoning Board of Appeals meeting is March 10th. So you, you fall under the old, old status. Do we have to notify the public two days ahead before we vote on something like this? No, well, once we vote on it, we can put it out on the internet. Yeah, I can have Jamie post it tomorrow, actually. What's your opinion, Mike? Is there any laws or mandates still out there that would stop us from doing something like this? No, or? no. no. it's at your discretion now. I make a motion. We open our meetings. I'll second that. Definitely. On whatever. I don't know why we want to wait. I feel March, like uh, yeah. I feel like Governor Cuomo March. saying we're going to do it, but it's uh, down here. I, if March. we're going to do it, let me say March, March the first. Then we'll cover a ZBA meeting. We'll come, we'll cover so I'll make a motion. March first, we already Mike. I'll second that, so we move on. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna take a vote. Go ahead. All, All favor. All favor. Aye. Aye. Opposed. Carry down. March now we'll first. Start Okay, one more stupid little thing, and we can walk back there. Yeah, we have a lot of time. Come on, we're dragging out for months. How's the AD system going? There's no system. Um, he's back for vacation, supposedly today. I'll get in touch with him, and maybe by March first, we'll have the whole system get going. I'm done. I got one more thing to bring up. I've asked Colleen. She's having difficulty in regards to getting our uh, computer experts. 
to uh, get our time clocks up and going. Our time clocks have been sitting in her office before the first year, back in November. During the process. And During the, process. the uh, computer professional that is supposed to be setting that up along with some other programs has not taken care of this, He's so that's why we're not on board. He's working on everything else. Yeah. When did he start? He came he over to my garage uh, Friday. Oh, yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> yesterday. Okay. And uh, no. You're not on in your <laughs> And uh, he took the time clock, and then I put a plate on the wall, and he's going to drop off some uh, cord, and I'm going to put that up, and he'll be back to continue with it. So, okay. Because I talked with Colleen yeah. the first of the week, and I said, where's our time clock? And this is what she told me. Yeah. It was after that. It's in the process. Thank so. you. That's the only thing. I, Jane, I got an email from Mr. Herring. He asked something about something that he had on the agenda for to discuss. He discussed what he wanted to talk to about your W-2s, but there was a resolution 104 and a meeting of from 1122 that yes. we didn't address with him. So okay. you want to do that? That's fine. That is um, yeah, I think in the email, he wants to know why it was tabled. I can't answer that. I'm not sure, but he can, he's, he, he's unmuted now. So if you want to let him tell us what he wants and he's willing to do it, I'm sure. Jack, you there? Yes, I am. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I, I did send a request to be put on the agenda for tonight for a couple of things. Uh, one of which was Mr. Molino's pay, which has been resolved, and I thank you for that. Uh, the second uh, issue is Resolution 104 from 2021 uh, with regards to elected officials in the town hiring town employees to work at their private, uh, private uh, properties. And... Um, at that time, it was tabled for more discussion needed. Uh, has there been any discussion on that? I can't remember. It was. It was. I was out. It was in August. I. I, I don't know why it was put in and why it was or why it was tabled. Wasn't that a control? Okay. Uh, uh, then let me ask this, what more discussion is needed? I mean, it's, it was uh, a prohibition against elected officials hiring town employees. And I'm just curious as to what you wanted to uh, learn from more discussion. I don't remember. I, I don't remember. Honestly, I can't say. Is it is it that you think it's not a conflict? Not my case, but I wasn't on the board then, so I don't remember why it was taken. Right. I understand that, Mr. Niles. You were not a board member at the time, so um, obviously I wouldn't be asking you for input, but. Um, Question. I'm just I'm just curious as to why something that appears to be that important is tabled for more discussion. Uh, first of all, like what is the more discussion that's needed? I mean, it's to me, it's rather uh, obvious. Uh, should uh, elected officials be able to hire town employees to work at their private property? And I would like I would like a an answer or a discussion with regards to this. I mean, tabled, tabled for how long? It's been several months. I'll be just with you, Jack. I'm not gonna lie to you. I think it was an oversight on, on my part. I can't speak for the rest of the board. Okay. Um, it's something that we definitely have to pick back up on. I thank you for mentioning to us. Well, I, I appreciate that, but pick up, you know, when. Um, let me ask this. Are there any elected officials in the town of Luzerne that currently have 
uh, town employees on their payroll. Is it, am, am I correct in saying then being that I couldn't hear any answers that no town employee has. Everybody said no, Jack, everybody said no. Oh, okay, thank you. Um, let me ask you, is there, a, is there any resolution requiring the posting for job openings in the town? I, under, I understand that there were two subjects hired for uh, the buildings and grounds department that had formerly worked for the supervisor. And I would like to know if those were posted positions in which applications were taken and interviews were conducted, or how were those two persons hired uh, for by the town um, that had formerly worked for the supervisor? I, I, are we legally obligated to post jobs? I think, is that what the fair question to paraphrase what you asked first? Mr. Jack, is it, do we, are we legally uh, obligated to post positions? Yes, basically, is there a resolution that requires posting of jobs? Um, and if not, were the two people hired by the building and grounds that formerly worked for the supervisor, um, were they interviewed by a panel or board or were any town residents considered for that job or was it just basically uh, a shoe-in type of thing because they had worked for the supervisor? I don't know if the town has a current resolution, I guess. We, we could, uh, I'm sure, look into the two specific individuals that you're talking about and find out what the process was that they had some sort of lateral transfer and, and either um, um, research that or you know, bring it up at a, uh, you know, if there's something to um, investigate, uh, you know, to discuss that and uh, look into the, their, um, the circumstances around that. But you know, I, I don't know of any particular resolution regarding postings. Um, Mr. Council, with all due respect, I appreciate your input. Uh, but I would really like to hear from the elected officials uh, an answer to that question. Sure, but I just want to make sure that we stay on agenda tonight because this wasn't a topic that was going to be discussed. You might want to bring it to an agenda meeting or make it a public comment. Um, well, I, I, I think I wish to correct you. Um, I brought it up at the uh, agenda meeting and I was told to be uh, request to be placed on the agenda for this evening, which I did. And now you're telling me I need to be placed on the agenda meeting for next month. Uh, this nonsense needs to stop quite honestly. Uh, I've got a concern here. There's obviously an issue at question and I'm just asking for a answer. That's all I'm asking for. Great. You've got a, a comment. Um, there's two individuals. It's not a comment, sir. It's not a comment. It's a question. There's a big difference. Do any of the elected officials care to respond to my question? Jack, I'll respond to the first part where I don't know if it's legal that we have to post a job before we hire. I really don't know. I, I would love to know that for my own uh, knowledge, peace of mind to know that we're doing things correctly. I don't know. Do you know, Gene, do we have to put a job up for posting to hire somebody? I don't know. No, there's no requirement. The question was, is there a resolution? I don't know. We'd have to go back through, you know, the town's history of, of resolution. Gotcha. Uh, again, council, I appreciate that, but I mean, like as the supervisor and quite honestly, as the board to not know if a position needs to be 
posted or not. I mean, that's an issue. Aside from these last two that were hired, of which I suspect uh, it wasn't posted and no one else was offered the position, particularly town residents. And that's a major concern. We've seen in the past a, a, a regular routine of the town board or and or the supervisor hiring out of town contractors for things. And now it appears that we're hiring out of town people for our jobs, while many people in the town, I feel are entitled to them. And there should at least be a resolution that says these jobs need to be posted to give people an opportunity to apply. I mean, I, I don't disagree with you as supervisor, but in the last two months we've put on the internet, I got signs out in front here and downtown. We're looking for help. We're looking for, I mean, how much more can we post? We well, Mr. Molino, let me let me ask you the two I people that were hired the buildings and grounds department worked for you um, at your private uh, company or residence. Uh, were those particular positions posted, and uh, did you receive any applicants from town residents? I just don't know how to answer that. I, mean, I had part time. Well, it's rather simple. I mean, yes or no. Uh, they were hired or worked for you. They were hired for town positions. Uh, had that job been posted and had other people been applied or been considered? Had they been interviewed or was it just a, uh, you know, secret done do? Uh, here you go. You worked for me. Uh, hired I by the secret done do stuff and I will wish you would stop it. And, and you want to make a form of a complaint, make it so we can get it settled. The man no, used not, to work for me part time. He applied here at the town and he, we did not have a position for that gentleman at that time. So he worked for me. I couldn't give him the work that he had, that he needed. And we had an opening in the buildings and grounds and he was there and he's doing an excellent job. It has nothing to do with me personally. I even had your son working for me for a while. So okay, well, that doesn't mean I, I can't have somebody to work in my business. We have people here that have family working here. So mm -hmm. the resolution was meant the same way. We got to worry about buying uh, a, a, a recycling uh, bin from one of the people that work here that on the side uh, has dump trucks. Come on, this is a small mm -hmm. town. You want to put people to work. And that's exactly my point. And not, and not only put them at work, but put them at work fairly. And I, I cannot believe that you don't know if you have a resolution or not that requires a normal accepted process for hiring in every, any governmental agency, whether they be civil service positions or not, to make it a fair process. The only thing I know that's on the books that for the most point, you have to hire people that live in Lake Luzerne. And that I, mm -hmm. I, I but right now with the workforce, we'll take anybody if they, no matter where they live. One thing too, Jack, that might help clarity with what you're talking about is last year, I know we did pass a resolution where nobody could be hired or terminated without the board's approval. So it's not just up to any one person any longer. Not that it ever was, I'm not saying that it was, but I know as of last year, the, the whole board has to approve anybody that's coming on to uh, the employee of, of the town of, of Lake Luzerne. So I know it doesn't go back too far, but as of last year, that was something that was created. Okay. Uh, just one last question on this. Uh, uh, a gentleman that was working for the buildings and ground department resigned, I believe in June. Has he been replaced? We're trying right now. That's why we got all these signs up looking for help. Has that position been advertised uh, in the post star or on our website? If you look on our website, we have that on our website, Jack. 
Okay, we have posted it out in front of our town building. We put put it down on our billboard down there at the uh, the pavilion. Okay, again, we're trying to save a little bit of money. A uh, ad in the uh, post star for employment can run you anywhere from three to five hundred dollars. Okay, we've got five people or six people right now that have sent resumes in for employment. And it has taken us over, I believe a month and a half to get six people to sign in. We are trying to fulfill those positions and we are having a very difficult situation just like everybody else around the United States trying to get people to work. Well, Mr. Lewandowski, with all due respect, I, sin I sincerely, uh question that it costs three to five hundred dollars to put a uh, help wanted ad in the post star okay um, but what i'm looking for is a fair process for people particularly town residents that are looking to become employees in the town we got five applicants at the present time jack we have decided that we are going to uh be interviewing them okay and see if we can get two people out of the six to fulfill our needs. Okay, thank you. You're welcome, and sir. The last question I have is with regards to a meeting that was held on November 22nd, 21. Uh, was that meeting posted or announced ahead of time? This is a request I had sent in in advance so that you would be able to be prepared as I was told to do. Um, so I, I really think I should be able to at least get an answer. Was that meeting posted or was and the public notified there was a meeting uh, scheduled for 7 p.m. on November 2nd? Jack, this is Lori, uh, the deputy clerk. Mm -hmm. uh, at the time of that meeting, Cindy and I were both out with medical issues. And it's my understanding that um, I believe Colleen or Karen had posted, was it you or Colleen? Colleen had posted it out on the front door of the town hall. Um, that's all I can tell you on that. We were not here. I mean, well, I appreciate I appreciate that, but you know, legally, it, it's got to be posted uh, in the uh, town paper and uh, on the town website, not on the front door. It up on the website, I don't know that for sure, but I believe it also got put up on the website. Well, if it did, I I didn't see it. Um, I had requested a, a I sent a file request for any notice. <laughs> of posting of that meeting and the response was nothing available so i can only assume that as far as documents go including anything that might have been taped to the front door did not exist well i wouldn't assume that it didn't exist it was on the front door sir um well it it was foil requested i wasn't provided with it is there an explanation for that i'm trying to give you the explanation as i know it um, Colleen had removed that notice after the meeting. She did not know that she should have kept that notice and she discarded it. So we do not have that notice. Okay. But it do, you, do you realize that as town records, that's not something that can be disposed of? She that is a viable material. Please. And it was in the absence of Cindy and I who know those rules and take those very seriously. Colleen did the best she could do, not knowing. That was not her job to know that. She was trying to help out and do the right thing and she did not keep the notice. She did okay, not know well, it was required. I, I, under, I understand your um, description of it. However, that does not fulfill the law requirement. Well, it is what it is. We were absent. Like I said, they were trying to do the best they could do in our absence. 
and I and I understand that I do, but well, it I is what it is. Does is not an exception in the law. Do you understand that? I do, and I have nothing further to say. I think I've said my piece. Okay, thank you. Um, secondly, I, uh, I uh, Mr. Harry, I requested the minutes of the um, meeting. And all I got were minutes that just said a meeting was convened and it was uh, changed to executive session. Uh, I also requested a letter that was sent uh, apparently by the town attorney to who was then a current employee uh, with regards to not renewing their um, contract or employment or whatever. Um, and in that letter, it said that the attorney was sending it at direction of the sound bo town board, which tells me that during this executive meeting, there was a vote to send this letter. Uh, the way I understand the open meetings law is that executive sessions are confidential, with the exception of if there is a vote taken, uh, minutes must be kept. And I requested a copy of those minutes and received none. Can I get an explanation for that? No minutes, no minutes taken at exactly. Perhaps no council could, could answer that for me or? Yeah, I guess that I would say there, there are no minutes. Minutes are, minutes are required if there's a vote in an executive session. And right. there obviously was a vote because council's letter said this is at the direction right. of the town board. But um, if I guess, would you like me to answer the question? Please. Okay, so I guess based on your assumptions, there either wasn't a vote taken or there were no minutes. Um, and so everything that you received is the entirety of the town's records. And if you have an issue with that, there's an appeal process that you can pursue through FOIL. Right, I understand all that, Council. But I mean, in your letter, you you said to this em former employee that you were writing a letter, quote unquote, on direction of the town board. Now, if it's on direction of the town board, that's obviously uh, that there was a vote taken for them to ask you to do that. You're not putting words into my mouth. I take direction from the town board without there being votes on everything that I do. Um, we just had a discussion about a, um, a contract being drafted. We didn't have to. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't have to reduce that to a motion or resolution. I take mm -hmm. instruction and direction from the town board without there being a meeting and without there being a vote on everything. I understand you think that every closet has a skeleton in it. It's not the case. No, that's not the case either. I don't believe it has a skeleton in it. But. Um, <clears throat> If, if one town board member told you to write a letter during that meeting and the others said, don't write it, uh, what would you do? I, I, you're, you're discussing a hypothetical scenario, sir, that if you- No, it's not hypothetical. This is about a meeting that occurred. A hypothetical question. And I'm not gonna get into that with you. If, if you'd like to discuss it with me, um, we can talk um, separately offline, but it really doesn't have anything to do with um, what you received or what was in the letter. And so what I would ask is either if you have uh, an issue with the response to your FOIL request, that you pursue the remedies that are available to you in order to appeal it. No, sir, it's not, it's not that I have an issue with the response. I, it's that I have an issue with the fact that minutes weren't taken. Yes, that's what his question is. There was right. no action taken, so there's no minutes. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Council, council, may I ask you this? Um, when you sent that letter to the former employee and you told them that it was at direction of the town board, would that at least have been the majority of the town board? 
I don't recall the um, uh, discussion. And I can say, um, in addition to there being um, executive session, there's such a thing as attorney client privilege. And so I cannot discuss things that are um, discussed between the town board and myself when they're in a privileged communication. My point, sir, is that the open meetings law say that that is not a privileged communication, that minutes are required. I understand. Well, if, if this is as far as we'll go with it, I must say that I'm very disappointed. I mean, I think it's rather black and white and rather obvious that minutes were required. Um, and I think it's a, a failure of representation, quite honestly, uh, to from the town board, not particularly just council, but the town board to its citizens. We have a right to know this stuff. It's not like I don't know it. I mean, I received a copy of the letter. I've got all the facts. That's not the issue. The issue is why wasn't it recorded? That's all. I understand your concern. Well, I appreciate that, but let me be on the record that I'm very, uh, very, uh, unhappy with the the response to the questions and I, I feel that um, you're not quite honestly that you're not following the law. Thank you. Uh, Mike, uh, just on those applications we have to look at, three of them live in Lake Luzerne, three of them don't. So we'll start with the three that live in Lake Luzerne. All right, moving on. Um, what day we gonna have that meeting? Tuesday the twenty second. February twenty second at seven. Thank you. All right. Um, Mr. Now you spoke. How about the um, zoning for officer? Do you have anything? I have nothing further. I've given provided you with my report. I have nothing else to report. I wait. Very good. Good job. Um, I believe I sent a letter of from the state that we did not get that bridge in New York for a uh, summer bridge. If you guys didn't receive that, I can send it to you. Um, I got Corey from the DEC that they want to connect to the fourth plate campground. They want to connect down by the hydrant on the same side of the road, so they don't have to worry about going underneath the road, which is good. He got he got the diagrams. They're going to put in new valves, a new hydrant for us, and everything. Um, I'll keep in touch on when you want to do that. We had the water guy, Jeff, come down, and he sat with us one morning two weeks ago for about two hours and we talked and it was excellent. He's a great fit. Um, he's got some good ideas. He's got some new ideas that we need to take into consideration, embrace them and go with them because things down there are old. We have to upgrade. It's just gonna make it all better. It's gonna make it run last longer and last longer. Um, so he's supposed to be getting ideas and stuff on paper and hopefully he'll get them to you guys soon. Uh, hey Ron, a few months ago we passed a resolution authorizing Chazen to go through there and evaluate all the equipment. It was when the uh, the pen that showed the, val the yeah. volume in the tanks broke yeah. and when he shot that off it killed the whole system. It was wired in wrong where one controlled the other thing and he had no idea what was going yeah, on. Yeah, the problem he had was coordination. Um, Without getting into the details, it don't matter right now. How come we don't have Jason down there going through this building with him and evaluating all the equipment? All right, let's give him a little time to go through and see what we need first. Well, they I might mean, help. We could probably bring them down and, and this was go something. It with them. This was something that he embraced. He wanted this to happen. So I think all we right, should well, move forward with that. And, and, well, and I would it. suggest, as as you guys as the board, as we get engineer down there to look at it because I'm sure. With engineer and him, 
They can make these. Sure. It's, it's all going to just make it better. Right now, it's like beating on a drum mm -hmm. with old stuff. Yep. So, and I, I got one, one other concern. When he's on duty and he goes to these chlorination sites and gets samples of stuff, he does, he's in his own personal vehicle. And I think it's wrong because, God forbid, something happened and his truck gets hit or he gets hit in his own personal vehicle. Who's reliable? They say he's not getting mileage now that he started full time too. So, so I feel that if he's on duty there, that he should have that water truck there that Glenn always had. You know, well, isn't that the one you kept where he let his buildings and ground use? No, they have a Chevy that Glenn always used for water. That's the one that's not being used right now. Well, right? It's on the road. It's it's on the road. It, it's, they it's use it every day. On the side of it. Yeah, but it, it's in place. They use it now in place of the one that's not on the road that we need to keep the place going. So it's, it's yeah, it's look, six, hours, six hours a day. They don't need that little Chevy. Oh, you you offered a, a volunteer one of your trucks. I can, I can. Why don't we do it? I can. Let's do it. Easy fix. Let's do it. We have talked about having the. Uh, but that truck is out of the water department. Why should I have to sacrifice one of my trucks for a truck that's down there that is supposed to be for? We never had a truck because the trucks, the people that were doing that for years and years were using one of our trucks that, that is in the fleet. That truck says water department. It says water department. It says it right on it. It's a, yes, it says water department. Thank you. I, I think I can read that. Yeah, and it came out of the water department. He's working for the water department, so let's give him the darn truck. He can use it anytime he wants. Ron, he, I, I believe he's asked for it. I guess the question was, Ron. That was the one that replaced the one that we had problems with this fall, with the plow and the frame and everything on the old truck. No, it's this it's the Chevy fifteen hundred that's always been there. <coughs> okay, where's the truck? That I'm, I'm just trying to take the reliability off the top. Well, 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 Ryan, you're water superintendent. We're not right. Fighting. He's water superintendent. If you feel he should be in that truck, then put him in that truck. He's asked for it before. Who do you ask? Rick. And, and Rick's not, not the water superintendent. You are. Anywhere. You are. But you're taking not. away a vehicle that they need now with the other one down. You want to buy a brand new one for the other one, then we can give them that one. How many trucks do you got now? You just got two brand new trucks, some trucks. Yeah, and one single axle went to a spare truck. That's it. Yeah. And so some breaks down. We don't truck have to jump in. They don't have a spare truck. I'm just bringing you I, I, I know what attention mean. to something that it's possible it could happen. And I don't want to see it happen. I, I mean, I don't want the town to have to buy this guy a brand new truck if he gets hit on the side of the road. And you he, know? he brought it to our attention that when he was on part time, he got mileage. And now that he's full time, he doesn't get mileage for running his own person's vehicle. Has he turned it in? I he turned turned it in. Well, that's part, of, that's part of the contract to get in salary. He doesn't get my Okay, right, right. Let, 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 you know. That's fine. Um, we'll work on that situation. Okay. I, I'm just bringing it to you a situation I think might cause a problem if something's not done. But anyways, um, oh, now I lost what I was. The brine machine is working excellent. We've made over 18,000 gallons, I believe. Um, we've got almost all of these trucks dialed in, calibrated to every every round that they go around, they're using about a bag of bucket of salt. I think it's, this is the start of something very good. We got to two new trucks, the piles on them scrape wonderful. Uh, they are they are kind of aggressive, so if the road's not in great condition, it might pluck a little bit of material out on a hole or something like that. But these plows are these plows are what's going to save us money in the long run. Um, the two new plows that we are supposed to get in the middle of the month probably won't happen because Metal Plus had a fire at one of their welding shops up there, and our plows were in there. 
So, but he said they're still, hopefully we'll get here on time. I don't, hopefully they will. Um, I have a little spreadsheet there that I've done and I will email to each one of you. It shows the truck, how many miles it, it salts and how much it's putting out per round. With all our trucks loaded, we are carrying about 90 ton. They don't use that. They use about, a, about six ton, which is a loader bucket or a loader bucket and a little more per storm. So you got to look at it in my eyes than not just looking at maybe these numbers. Um, but other than that, to be almost through winter and not have any sand on these roads is, is, is great, especially for spring cleanup. Because that time I uh, used to clean roads, we can do something else. We can go cut brush and get these roads ready. Um, so other than that, I think that's all I have. Uh, the Fourth Lake Campground, they're calling for 25 gallons per minute at their peak. So they're not calling for a lot of water, just so you know. Um, but other than that, that's that's about all I get. Oh, I get. Oh, we had a water leak down in town. It was a service line. Um, just uh, it was leaking. We fixed it. Um, that's about it. I think that's it. You got anything in here? I'll probably have more at the next meeting because I forgot my sheet. I thought I had. Um, but other than that, we are clicking on all cylinders and we're doing good. We're almost through winter. Uh, Mr. Attorney, do you have anything? No. Right. I don't have anything. On motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? All right. Aye. Hey, Rob. Yes. Uh, uh, come on.